Hey everybody, welcome back to another Krea tutorial. Today I'm going to go over uh, some options that you can use with the Bezier curve, which is going to be right up here. So obviously you can use it as a vector, and a vector layer. You can make your points, curve it, hit enter, and you can go back and edit those points uh, later on, which is the perks of using a vector uh, layer. However, if you're not really concerned too much about this, um, you just want to get some more control uh, making either patterns or different types of lines and stuff, you can actually use it on the paint layer as well. So first I'm going to show, uh, let me actually get that brush in here, if I can find it. I don't know if I saved it when I was doing some testing, but we'll, we'll see. Um, this one, I don't think it is. Alright, that's okay. We can actually make it from scratch. We will rename this to Busy Curve Brush. Alright, cool. So now that we've renamed that, basically I made it a new brush. It's different from my custom ink brush. So basically what I want to do is take this Bezier curve and make my my curve basically but have the line adjust um, from in, in variation of thickness. So kind of like how I would draw I have to add that back in now. Great. Hold on one second here. Let me add this back in. Okay, so as you can see, when I use my tablet, there's variation in uh, thickness and or basically just, just a line weight overall. And if I make my brush bigger, you can even notice it more. But I want the same effect to apply to my Bezier curve. Now, with that same brush selected, I can go ahead and, and uh, I didn't want to do it for some reason. I'm on the wrong brush now. Come on. There we go. So as you can see, I made the busy curve, but there's no variation to the thickness. It's not applying the same pressure as if I just draw with a normal brush tool and uh, my tablet pen. So we can actually make a custom brush for that. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go back to my Bezier Curve brush. I'm going to go to Size. I'm going to turn on Fade. And I'm going to turn off the pressure because that basically doesn't really do anything. And as you can see, if you select the defaults, you can automatically tell how that pressure is going to go. The reason I want to use Fade is it's going to take into consideration almost like the distance or how long it is. I which doesn't make sense because there's that, but I guess how it fades in and out from point A to point B, right? So we'll just use the default here and I'll show you how that looks. I'm just going to make some basic curve. And as you can see, it sort of has done that, right? It's obviously just the starting point here. We want to make it is obviously not the best curve in the world, but you can tell there's kind of something going on here, right? Now, before we continue, I want to go to tool options and I want to make sure that you have auto smooth curve on um, and that the outline is the brush. And we're going to actually move it to 20 just to make it a little bit smoother. As you can see, it's kind of snapping here. All right, we're gonna go back to our brush settings and I'm actually gonna, oops, delete that. Come on, there we go. I'm gonna kind of adjust this, make it a little extreme. There we go. Obviously, you can change it how you want it to be. It doesn't have to be this extreme. 
the higher this is gonna be, the thicker this will be. We just really wanna make a nice, um, line weight here. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and make our busy curve. Yeah, it's got some weight there. I'm gonna try it with a thicker brush. All right, we still have some work to do, so we're gonna actually Okay, so after some tweaking, this is the curve that I've got with my fade to make it work with the Bezier curve the way I like. So I'm going to make the curve here. It's going to actually make it a little longer. So as you can see, there's a little bit of thickness towards the beginning, and it kind of tapers off at the end here, which still needs a little bit of tweaking, but I can probably just actually... Move that down a little bit more. That might give me a more desirable effect. And it's close enough. So it does need a little bit, you know, trial and error to get exactly what you want. But if you need to make some quick strokes, and you don't really want to use the the normal brush tool, this would be a, a nice way to do it. The only downfall is you cannot go back and edit the points. So just keep that in mind. Once you make this Bezier curve, if you don't like how it looks, you just gotta do it all over again. So if you wanna make really careful, like delicate lines, you can do that, and you can have a little bit of line uh, variation in that stroke, and you don't have to like use um, a talent pen specifically to get that, uh, what do you call it, that line variation. I'm actually gonna save that before I forget. All right, thank you. And then another way we can use the Bezier curve is with our patterns. Brush. So if we go to our pattern brush here, I'm gonna change that pattern because it's kind of big and we don't need it to be that big. Custom brush tip. And we will just use um, try to think what. I did before. We can, yeah, we can just use the hearts, I guess. Alright, so we'll go back to our busy curve and we can say, oh, we want the hearts like that. Get it a little big. Let me actually start over. And this will just delete. So we'll just make a curve. And as you can see, we have a really nice stroke of all the hearts. Now, this is going to be really helpful if you're doing patterns. Um, like on your character or when um, in a can't think of the word <laughs> like architecture or something that needs a repeatable pattern that you don't want to just like draw and say okay I'm done you know like if I do it with the brush pat like it comes off nice right but if I need something very specific and I'm having trouble getting um, that pattern to stay within a certain space I can use the Bezier curve. Or if I just want to make, like, just, mm, we'll just kind of do that, I guess. Yep, yeah, that works. <laughs> so we can go ahead and use the Bezier curve with the patterns too. Which actually I think is really neat to do because, you know, if, especially if you're doing like, just some fun design work and you want a specific pattern to go around, a shape you've already made, you don't have to sit there and go, okay, I gotta, I gotta keep this going without picking up my pen. All right, it's a little wider there. I'll have to go back and change it and then the pattern starts all over again. Here you can, you can get a consistent repeating pattern without trying to keep it all in one stroke, right? Because if I do it like it, this again, it just starts over doesn't see how you can start to get double double hearts here and stuff like that you can still get them here but it's spaced out it's not uh, as it's not happening as often it's staying sorry it, uh, hit my table it's staying within the pattern itself so and you can use this with your custom pattern so 
um, I think it was loaded before was a custom pattern. Yeah, so this was a custom pattern. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger though. So this was like for some reefs I was doing, just to give some depth to the um, the reef I was drawing and coloring. So if I wanted to, I could go back and just say, all right, we'll just start adding that in there and I can color over it later and it's keeping my rotation options in there, all that fun stuff. So I don't have to sit here and go, la, 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 you know, Actually, I think it might even work better with the rotation because, let's see here. So I just start making crazy lines. Yeah, it's actually giving me more variation in that rotation versus if I were to do a brush. You can see, well, actually, let me make this a different color so we can see better. Yeah, you can see here, like, it has more of a rotating, um, effect here where mine kind of like stops and sticks to one rotation angle whereas the curve gives me more variation so obviously with this specific pattern i probably wouldn't do that with but with other patterns it might um work out a lot better that's pretty much it for some extra bezier tool uh, options that you can use um in your artwork or patterns or whatever it is you're doing and um so I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was informative. Um, I hope that you feel comfortable using the Bezier tool um, as a paint layer option or paint layer tool versus a vector layer. I hope in the future we can uh, create vector layer lines with the Bezier curve and then have the stroke um, thickness change as you know the line changes. But you know, Krita has lots of things it's working on so one step at a time but for now if you're looking for an alternative to that um at least you know that you can make your own custom brush change the size of it with one of the options in the brush menu and then get some line variation and line thickness in there it's not perfect i could still tweak this a little bit more to make it smoother but it's an option that you can actually do and if you want to try out um, using it with other brushes and other uh, um, settings here, definitely go for it. Um, to my, to what I've experienced so far, the Bezier Curve will work with whatever brush you use, regardless of what kind of brush it is. Um, I have yet to come across one that doesn't work. There possibly is one, I just haven't noticed it yet. So if there is, let me know in the comments below. Uh, yeah, as always, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, again, if you have questions or comments, leave them, in, leave them down below, and I'll try my best to answer them and get back to you. And I will see you guys in the next video.